Hi, good morning. My name is Kelsey Marquardt. I'm the International Admissions and Retention Coordinator at Concordia University, Wisconsin, a mid-sized university in the Midwest of the United States. Today, we'll be talking about the Computer Science Program, the Masters of Computer Science Program, uh, and how that process for applying to the Computer Science Program has changed due to COVID-19. So without further ado, let's get into it. So as you can see right away, the computer science, the Masters of Computer Science program has two concentrations. They are the software engineering concentration and the information, si and the information systems uh, concentration, excuse me. We'll get into the differences between those concentrations in just a little bit. So here is what we're going to be covering today. First, we'll go over an overview of Concordia University, Wisconsin for those students who choose to completely uh, do complete their program on campus, that is an option for you. Or if you want to start online and finish your, your degree on campus, you might want to know what it's about and what it looks like and the pros and cons. Uh, so we'll go over that. Then we'll go through the updated application process uh, that has changed a little bit for COVID-19. Um, and we'll go through all of that and then we'll move into the Masters of Computer Science overview and go through the differences between those two concentrations. Lastly, we'll have time for some question and answer. All right, so like I said, you can start online and finish on campus. There is no reason for you to delay or alter your timeline because of COVID-19 affecting the admissions or the availability of classes at Concordia, Wisconsin. If students choose to complete and, and do their entire degree online, they can for the master's computer science program. Um, or if you want to do a mixture, that's fine too. If you want to do all of your classes on campus, you can do that. We are, ex we are still um, sending out I-20 documents, um, but if those visa interviews are not open in time, we will defer those I-20s for free. So please do not think that you have to do any portion of your program online if that's not what you want. Um, on the screen as well, I put in a lot of screenshots here of how our computer science team has been working around the clock to make sure that we are contributing to our local community because of COVID-19. So they are using the 3D printers we have on campus and we have quite a few um, to making these uh, masks that our healthcare workers are picking up on, on a weekly basis. So it's been really, really wonderful being able to give back to the community we live in, um, in this way during this, this surreal time. Okay, so if you plan on coming to campus for any portion of your degree, where is campus? Uh, we are in the Midwest United States, like I said, so we're in that blue state right there. Uh, which is 20 minutes north of Milwaukee, which is a large city in Wisconsin, the largest city in fact, um, which is very diverse. There is a lot of art and culture happening in Milwaukee, and we also have three national sports teams that we can't wait for them to start playing again. We're, we're all counting down the days. Um, Milwaukee is 90 minutes north of Chicago in Illinois. So that was our two major international airports that you can choose to fly in and out of once things lighten up. But know that there's a lot of options and being so close to two large metropolitan cities really gives our students a lot of access to things that they wouldn't normally get. Concordia, Wisconsin is also blessed to be very popular amongst international students. We have 400 plus international students from 37 different countries. So you're not going to feel like you're in a mini um, bubble of, of your own country. There's a lot of interaction happening here. We are also blessed to be on the shores of Lake Michigan, which is a lake that is so big. It's one of the Great Lakes. It's so big you can't see the other side. So we have like our own mini ocean in Wisconsin. It's beautiful. And campus is located right on the shores, as you can see. Uh, we are also all connected by tunnels underneath the building. So even when it gets a little colder, um, we don't feel that. So you'd never have to put on a coat when you live on campus. 
we currently have about an equal number of undergraduate and graduate professional students. So it's a really great mix of uh, uh, students and what they're looking to get from, from Concordia, Wisconsin. Just as a highlight as well, uh, Concordia, Wisconsin has the fourth highest international student population in Wisconsin, which is something we're very proud of. Um, and there's a reason why, because we really care about our international students and supporting them through every part of the process of their education. Also, just as a note, uh, we are an NCAA uh, Division III school, which means we are a D3 um, school. We offer a lot of different sports, 32 in fact, which is quite a lot compared to other schools of our size. Um, I wanted to include this photo as well. The bluffs are just gorgeous. We take full advantage of being on the shores of Lake Michigan. In the warmer weather, you can often see students down there enjoying the beautiful lakefront. Uh, our school is a private school. Uh, it's a Christian school, um, but you do not have to be Christian to come to this school, just as, just as uh, a side note. But that does mean that we do have very strong morals and ethics, um, and we are a very safe campus. Uh, we're the number one safest, in fact. We also have a fitness center. This is the um, lifting weights side, but there is also a cardio side of, of the fitness center. So you can be uh, very healthy on campus. But we don't want you to just be physically healthy. We want you to be mentally and emotionally healthy as well. So we have two comfort dogs. Their names are Sage and Zoe, um, and they can often be seen around campus. Um, they're especially popular during finals times. Um, so keep an eye out for them on campus. They're, they're one of our wonderful parts of being a, a Falcon. Uh, we do have four dining areas on campus. They offer vegetarian and ethnic dishes. Uh, the vegetarian options I want to stress are available every single day. There's always a salad bar um, and the vegetarian dishes are, are also um, changed out frequently. So every day you'll come in, there's a new vegetarian option. So you won't get bored. We also have eight different residence halls on campus. They have a lot of different room styles, so you can pick which one you want. Um, and then also, you can see that one right there. Uh, it has a gorgeous view of Lake Michigan. We also have an ice skating rink during the colder months that a lot of students really enjoy. Um, it's kind of a magical place, especially during the evenings with all of those lights. We also have a smart classroom um, and that smart classroom teaches students to help manage their stress by controlling their breathing and spending time in a massage chair. So who can say no to a massage chair, especially during finals, right? We also make sure that our students take advantage of that wonderful metropolitan city so close by. Um, so you can see we take lots of field trips and there's always lots of options for students to get off campus as well. But we also have things going on on campus. So international events are happening constantly. It feels like before COVID-19, we were having one every week. Um, so there's also there's always something fun to do. Uh, international Education Week is probably our biggest um, event. Uh, but for that, we kick it off with lots and lots of events hosted by international students. And those students share something of their culture or a festival or a dance or uh, their Independence Day. Um, and then we end it with the International Food Fair. Um, so students will, will cook and prepare or purchase something that is traditional to their country and share that with everyone. It was more people than I've ever seen on campus. So it's really um, a wonderful way to for international students to interact with their, with their classmates and share some of their own culture. We also have multicultural uh, festivals and events you can see there. We make sure to uh, reach out to those students who are from that country to see if they would like to participate in, in hosting a festival. Um, our our uh, Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, was a wonderful time where we uh, brought uh, the, the dragons around campus. It was, it was great, it was a fun time. 
Uh, but also during COVID-19, we've been doing a lot more for our students, both on and off campus. So right there in the left, you could see that's our team. We have meetings via Zoom um, one, two to three times a week, just to make sure we're all up to date on what's going on with our students. Um, we also have weekly stack bags for students who are choosing to live on campus. And we have about 100 um, students who are still on campus right now. Then we also have to-go crafts that they could take back to their rooms and do so that they could still have something fun to do that isn't just schoolwork. Schoolwork, of course, comes first, but we wanna make sure you're having some fun while you're doing that. We have a, a security station that's right outside of campus that you have to check in before um, entering the campus to make sure our students are staying safe. Um, and for our for everyone, we have the quarantine challenge, which you can check out on our social media but we are having lots of events for students to do to earn points and those points earn prizes. Those prizes are gift cards to local um, businesses in the area. So students can, can get like a, a bag of coffee beans, um, but still supporting our local community as well. So this sounds great. How do we apply? Uh, first question that you're probably asking, do I need a computer science background to apply for the Masters of Computer Science program? You don't actually, you don't need a computer science background, but experience in the technology field is obviously going to help you be successful in this program. Within each of the courses though, there's going to be a mini optional course that won't count for credit, but for those students who don't have background in that particular skill set, they can do the mini course to get caught up uh, to where they need to be to be successful for that course. And that's built into every single one of the master's computer science classes. So you don't need background, but it is helpful. So what application materials do you actually need? First, we have the free online application just use code USACUW to waive that application fee. Next, we need your transcripts and diplomas from all post-secondary education. Um, previously, we were asking graduate students to mail those original copies to us, but we know mail is not an option, or even if it is, the place where you need to get your transcripts from might be closed. So at this time, we are accepting emailed scans of your transcripts and diplomas uh, email to us for the admissions process. Prior to enrollment though, we ask that we have those officials. Um, those can be when you come on campus um, or it can be mailed to us. We're just, we just don't wanna hold up your application process because you have no control over um, getting your original transcripts. Then you can see there, I've made a note. So for full admission into the program, we need a GPA of a 3.0 on a 4.0 scale. But if you don't meet that requirement, it's okay. We will still admit you. Uh, it will just be a conditional admission. So GPA of a 2.25 to 2.99, you can still be accepted. It just won't be the full admission. Then we'll need a copy of your English score. Uh, traditionally, that meant an ILTIS, TOEFL, or PTE score, and you can see uh, the requirements there for full admission. However, now some of those testing centers, or all of them, are closed. So we are accepting the Duolingo test. It's a wonderful test that you can do at home, it takes about an hour, and only costs $49. I highly encourage you to check that out. Um, we are also accepting the TOEFL just uh, created an at-home test. You can send that to us. We will accept that as well. Um, if you do not meet that English language requirement, again, it's okay. We have ESL classes. We can admit, admit you into first to make sure that you are successful in your program with your English skills. Then we'll need a resume or a CV to see your work experience. Uh, two letters of recommendation and a statement of purpose. So a statement of purpose is um, a letter saying why you want to study the Masters of Computer Science program. We get a lot of questions as well, just as a note down at the bottom, we do not require the GRE or the GMAT for admission. So no worries, you do not have to take that test. Program. So the Masters of Computer Science program, like we said, has two concentrations, um, but it is 30 credits. 
Uh, and that can be done in as little as one year if you're doing three semesters. Um, and like I said, you could do a mixture of things. You can do 100% online. You can do some face-to-face -face during the traditional daytime classes. Um, and those classes are going to be 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Um, and then also you can do fully face-to-face. -face. That is up to you and your learning preferences. And classes can be taken in any order in either format. So you can choose which classes you take when. Just as a side note, uh, Masters of Computer Science program is accredited by the Higher Learning Commission. Okay, so what is the difference between those two concentrations? First, the software engineering concentration focuses on creating the actual systems that are problem solving tools. So you'll study uh, classes like advanced algorithms, compliers, compilers, excuse me, um, programming language theory. So people who study this often want jobs such as a software developer, a team lead, a senior level developer. For the information systems concentration, you are going to focus on applying and manage technology that is used in the problem solving. So you'll study classes like advanced networking and system design and administration. People who um, graduate with this concentration often work as network infrastructures, uh, network administrators, database administrators, systems architects. As you can imagine, both of these concentrations are very sought after and highly employable, um, especially during a time like now where everybody is online even more than they were before. They have core classes and then they have concentration classes for this. So here are the core classes that both concentrations will do. Right now, vocational computing and artificial intelligence are the courses that are going to be available right away online. Um, so you can start with either one of those. Artificial intelligence to me sounds a lot cooler of a class, um, but what do I know? I am not a computer science engineer. Um, but you can see that there are a lot of other ones that are highly um, sought after right now, like cybersecurity. Um, with everybody online, that means other people are online who you don't want coming into your network. So that class can teach you how to how to make your um, make your network secure. Again, like I mentioned, within each course, there is going to be a mini catch up review. Um, this won't be counted for grade and it won't be required. It's only if you need to and you can do it at your own pace at your own time. So here are the concentration classes that are going to be different um, depending on which concentration you choose. Um, again, there will be those mini catch up classes. They will be there for you even if you don't have experience in that specific area that the class is teaching you. How does Concordia help with job placement? Uh, we have a career services center located directly on campus that is so wonderful in helping students through every part of the process of applying for a job. Um, they have application preparation, um, making sure your resume and CV are up, up to speed, um, actually finding those jobs or internships, um, finding suitable places to apply, things that are going to be what you're looking for to help you set those parameters. As you can expect right now, they're online, which is great for our students who are graduating. Um, they put things on like alumni networking events as well. So we help you with that process. You're not doing it alone. Where are our recent grads working? So you can see a whole list right there. Um, a lot of them are doing, um, well, all of them are doing working in their field. I've looked uh, through some of these companies. They're like creating VR experiences, which is amazing. They're working on um, networks. They're working in their field, which is so, so wonderful. If you would like to be connected with someone who is a computer a master's of computer science student or a recent graduate, please let me know. I would be happy to connect you. Um, we just need your contact information. Speaking of, here we are, contact information. If you want to learn more or if you have questions and you didn't want to ask them in the chat, that's no problem. Um, just send us an email. We would be happy to help. We are also on WhatsApp. Um, so if you are like, I've got way too many emails going on right now, I don't want to have to deal with that, feel free to check us out on WhatsApp and just send us a quick message. We would be happy to help you. I apologize, that was my puppy in the background. Um, if you want to apply now, remember use that code USACUW 
at applynow.cuw.edu. All right, thank you so much for, for paying attention and for checking us out for our Masters of Computer Science program. If you wanna learn more, check us out at cuw.edu or on any of our social media websites. We're on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope to see you on campus and I pray that you and your families are doing well during this crazy, crazy time. All right, bye-bye.